Round two of the high school football playoffs, and you may notice I'm all by myself. Well, Griffin missed a wide open layup in a pickup basketball game today, so he needed to take the night off. I'm kidding. Not about the missed layup, but Griffin was putting in the work. He was up near the border as Edgar faced Hurley. The Wildcats hoping for some revenge. They lost their first matchup 22 to 20. And in the first quarter, the North Stars couldn't ask for a better start. Stopping Edgar and then taking the ball down the field. Max Blamey punching it in from a couple yards out. That gives them an early lead. And then in the second, it's just more of the same. North Stars giving it to Blamey once again. From short distance, he is in. They have a 14-point lead. And Edgar needed points before the half, and with two minutes left in the quarter, Madison Butt put together a drive, hooking up with Everett Brame from 19 yards out for a touchdown. Just like that, it's a 14-8 ball game. Now in the third quarter, fourth and two for Hurley, and it looks like Tony Cummings is going to be stopped short by keeping those legs churning, and he is gone. 48 yards to the house. North Stars lead by 14 again, but like we saw before, the Wildcats would not go quietly into the night. As Edgar would come right back, Bart, or but with a great pass here to Ashton Shewitt down the sideline. That's a gain of 36 yards, and just a few plays later, Carter Butt is going to get into the end zone. Wildcats down six after the two-point conversion. And Hurley had a chance to ice things in the fourth at the two-yard line, handing it off to Blamey, but he coughs it up and Edgar recovers. They have life with a little over two minutes left. But on first down, Butt is going to look deep like he has been doing all night, and he would be intercepted by Derek Rancinisi. That would do it. Hurley moving on. They win this game 22-16, to and they will host Coleman next Friday. Whew. What a game in Division 7, but now we're going to take a step up to Division 6. There's just a little over three miles that separates Colby and Abbotsford High Schools, but a potential trip over 170 miles to Camp Randall was on the line. Colby led 14-0 in the second quarter, but the defense putting the clamps on. Abbotsford pitching outside, but that Hornet defense closing the edge. They force a Falcon punt. And a few plays later, I found out that Brent Jeske's favorite Migo song is Slippery. Look at him evading the defense, using his legs to take it inside the Abbey 10. And I also learned that Mateo Lopez loves that Mac Miller song, The Spins. Look at him hitting the circle button to find the end zone. The Hornets march on with a 48-8 win. They'll face Auburndale next week. And we'll finish up our highlights a D5 showdown between St. Croix Fall and Stratford. Look at the boys getting fired up. I almost wish I could get out there, strap the pads on once again. Tigers looked great from the start as they forced the Saints into a passing down, and that's exactly what they did. But check out Noah Barrett stonewalling this drive outside of the 30. The Tigers get the ball and looking for some blood. And on their very first play from scrimmage, Rafe Smart taking the handoff on that trap play, getting the edge, making guys look foolish. He's got the defense on ice skates. 51 yards to the house, a promising start for Stratford, but St. Croix Fall would complete the upset. They dropped the Tigers by a final of 19 to 14. In Division II, GNC champion Mosinee hosted Baraboo, and like last week, the T-Birds end a GNC bid for a state title. Mosinee falls 35 to 28. And then in D5, Amherst, they're staying undefeated. The Falcons drop Kiwani by a final of 28 to 21. And lastly, the Wittenberg Burnhamwood Chargers will move on. They beat Brilliant by a final score of 27 to 18. That sets up a round three clash between the Falcons and Chargers. You won't see Matt Ryan or Justin Herbert, but it'll be an awesome game next week. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, though. Tomorrow will be jam-packed with some major high school playoff action. In boys soccer, Mosinee will head to Rice Lake. They knocked off Lakeland Union last night. They are now one win away from a state appearance, and they'll be joined by their girls' volleyball team. Mosinee will face Luxembourg Casco in their sectional final, and in Division Four, Leona Wabino and Columbus Catholic will meet up the winner of that one advancing to state. And also we have the state cross country meet in Wisconsin Rapids. So we'll have a very busy day tomorrow and we'll recap those events tomorrow night. But in the meantime, we'll have a final look at the forecast after the break. We're going to start in Medford where the Raiders Peyton Kuhn had the opportunity to make some history. He was only 21 points away from becoming Medford's all time leading scorer. 
That might sound like a lot of points, but that's what the senior is averaging against GNC opponents. Tonight, they were hosting the Tomahawk Hatchets senior night for the Raiders. And in the first half, Kuhn gets his first basket in transition. Nice little finger roll. 19 points to go. We really got all of Kuhn's arsenal tonight. Later, off of the screen, he drills the three from the top of the key, and he's cooking early. And he's also getting it done on defense, getting the steal, and then taking it all the way. Gonna lay it in for two, needed just five more points going into the half, and here it is, a moment. Kuhn for three, he's got the record. Passes Steve Russ, the two-time Super Bowl champion, as Medford's all-time leading scorer. Something he's real proud about, but he knows there's still a lot of season left. Right now, I'm just focused on the rest of the season with the team and uh, getting as far as we can in playoffs, conference champs, regional champs, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm still going to score the ball like I do, and uh, we'll, we'll get as many as I can get. And the craziest part about all of this is that they still have a lot more basketball to play, so Kuhn will make sure to keep adding to his record. Medford travels to Altoona tomorrow. Expect a big performance from Kuhn. Congrats once again to Peyton, and by the way, they won 77-33. Lakeland Union boys looking to clean up on Anigo. First half, T-Birds, Darren, rising sun, takes the pass. He's going to turn the corner, and then he's going to finish with the acrobatic layup. Lakeland leads 23-16. to Anigo answers back, though. Eli Fleischman to Caden Steckbauer for the corner triple, but Lakeland still leads up by six. T-Birds back at it, though. Three-pointer, no good, but they get the rebound, and watch this pass inside. Braden Wyzek finishing in traffic to make it 25-16. to Lakeland goes on to win 57 42. All right, let's take a look at the Northern Lakes Conference. Phelps taking on Three Lakes. Blue Jays with a monster lead early in this game. And we love a good defensive highlight. Cole Melton with the block, and they're running the floor. Drops it off to Logan Erickson. He lays it in, and that would extend their lead. Out of halftime now, Blue Jays kept their foot on the gas. Jared Kaufman leaves it to Ashton Maney, goes up and under a circus shot. And that was just the way it went for Three Lakes tonight. Moments later, off the miss, Sam Epler is there for the putback, and Three Lakes rolls big 68 to 20. Whew. All right, let's take a quick break and regroup. I'm gonna take some time, look at the film, see where I can be better on these next highlights because to cover these athletes, you gotta think like these athletes and that means grounding, grinding out a tape session here and there. We'll have more Blitz after this. Welcome back to the Blitz. Earlier, we took you around the Northwoods for some boys basketball action. But now we've got to check in with the girls. Back to the great Northern Conference we go. Lakeland Union and Anigo Thunderbirds versus Red Robins. Battle of the Birds, if you will. Early on, this game was the Juliana We Met show. Catching the pass in traffic and then laying it in. They're out to an early lead. On the other end of the floor, Anigo attacking down low. Natalie Dewey's turnaround jump shot is good. And this game was all tied up. But I got to ask, do we know each other? Yes, we met. Awful joke, but a great bucket from Juliana. 33 points from her tonight, and Amaya White hit eight three-pointers. That's a new school record. They win 84 to 60. Sticking in the GNC, Mosini traveling to Rhinelander. Second half, straight to the action. Mosini leading the Hodags. They're pushing the tempo, and Mosini guarding the paint, but that leads Ava Lamers for the wide open three. Her bucket brings Rhinelander to within 15. Now with six minutes to go, Megan Brown anticipates that pass and brings it the length of the court, but can't finish. Mosini's Kate Fitzgerald then heaves the ball back to Jenna Plasic for the easy two. Mosini is cruising in this one. Rhinelander Wood battled to the very end. Some nice passing leading to an Ella Sheik layup and now the Hodags try to go with the full court press but it doesn't work out so well. Mosini is cool as a cucumber as they methodically move the ball down the court and it's ending in a Kate Fitzgerald deuce and there is your dagger. Final score, Mosini 63. Rhinelander 39. Let's head east. Leona Wabina hosting Oneida Nation. First half, great ball movement by the Rebels, and that's going to leave Elizabeth Krause wide open for the three, and she drains it. That puts the Rebels up three to two. A few minutes later, though, Kylie Higgins is going to miss a three of her own, but Krause cleaning up the mess. Her bucket puts the Rebels back up five to four. Oneida Nation, though, takes it right back. Some good passing leads to a Goni Thayer layup, 
And the next possession after that, a risky inbounds pass, and that leads to a nice move in the post. Hallie Babbage, there's the bucket, and Rebels would end up running away with this one, 64 to 28. Well, today was a great day for Bucks fans everywhere. And Nate, you seem pretty excited too. What's that in your hands right now? <laughs> hey, Megan, when the Bucks get the sweep, you know I gotta break out the brooms. When we get back, I'll break down the game and we'll hear from the team. Stick with us. All off season, Bucks fans endured constant taunts about their upset loss to the Miami Heat in the playoffs. But that was last year. And today, it was all about revenge. Game four in Miami, Giannis and the Bucks looking to sweep the heat and move on to round two. It was a very slow start for Milwaukee, though. First quarter, Trevor Ariza from the corner. His three gives the heat a six-point lead. The Bucks closed out the quarter strong, out to Bobby Portis. He responds with a corner three of his own. And it was a historic day for Giannis. Here he is. He gets the ball on the elbow, takes it down low, drops it off for Brooke Lopez. Giannis had 15 assists. We'll hear more from him later. This game would swing in the third quarter. Chris Middleton just doing his thing. Drives, spins, and then gets it to go. He had 12 points in the third quarter alone. And then the Bucs were looking to close it out. Giannis taking it to the defense. He's going to lay it off the glass. He had a triple-double. The third buck to ever record one in the playoffs. And Milwaukee sweeps Miami with a 120-103 to win. They did a great job. Um, you know, guarding us and, uh, as I said, just making it tough for us. But we have great guys out there that can also score the ball. And we just got to keep playing the right way, keep trusting, you know, what we do. And that's what we did today. And uh, that's where we were able to get the win. The Bucks will get a bit of a break before the second round. And after a shaky start on Saturday, they're going to look at the second half for a blueprint for the rest of these playoffs. They had a lot of guys step up and make plays on both ends of the court. Um, you know, had us on our heels a little bit. So um, for the last 24 minutes to settle in, get stops, be good defensively and, um, you know, share the ball and play with each other, play together. Um, and that's how we want to do it. That's how we want to play. This is now the third year in a row that Milwaukee has advanced past the first round. The first, the last time they did that, though, 1984 through 1987. It's been a while, but it's been good for the Bucks lately. We'll see who they draw in the Eastern Conference semifinals, and we'll break that down once we know for sure. On Friday night, the Brewers were supposed to open a three-game set against the Washington Nationals, but the rain didn't cooperate, so... We had a twin bill on Saturday. Here we go with game one this afternoon. And one of the biggest surprises of the season, Avisael Garcia, he's got a runner on, and that ball is hammered to deep left field. It's not coming back. And it's 2-0 Milwaukee. That's Garcia's ninth of the year. And I know Brewers fans miss Christian Yelich's bat in the lineup, but what about the defense? On the run, lays out to end the first inning. What a catch. Freddie Peralta's loving it. And speaking of Yelich, He's putting in work at the plate as well. Smokes a grounder down the right field line. That rolls all the way to the corner. An easy triple for Yelich. And the Brewers lead it 3 to nothing. Freddie Peralta threw a complete game in just seven innings. Brewers take game one, the final score, 4-1. to one. Game two from tonight, let's hope the Brewers have more luck than this guy putting his poncho on. The Nats would get on the board first. The veteran, Ryan Zimmerman, he's sending it the other way. That's going to find the corner. It's an RBI double, and Washington is up by one. But the Brewers would get one right back. Luis Arias is going to line a ball into left field. Lorenzo Cain, he comes hustling around third. He scores this game all tied up. The Brewers would eventually take the lead and then extend it. Willie Adames is going to rope one down the left field line. That's a fair ball. An RBI for Adames. The new guy's looking really good. Brewers will get two wins on the day. 6-2 to two the final in game two. So a great day for the pros and an even better one for one former Northwoods athlete. Mercer's Sydney Thompson is currently a senior at UW Oshkosh and now she's a national champion. At the Outdoor Division III Championships, Thompson won both the women's shot put and discus titles. Not a bad way to spend the weekend, if you ask me. So congratulations to Sydney. We could not be happier for you. But that's going to do it for sports tonight. Stay tuned. We'll have more news right after the break.